and they take too long. But the promises of God are the answer. You know, God and his promises are one. You don't separate the two. You know, I remember this was, this was several years ago. This, I was going to a youth camp, um, and it wasn't a youth camp put on by Life Church. And there was this, there was this um, guest speaker. And during the evenings, like after service, there were, there were youth that were getting healed by, by handfuls of the leaders in the cabinet. And so these kids were like, this is awesome. God's so cool. Like, they did, like some of them were very new to this concept. And they were getting healed. And I remember one, uh, one, of, their, one of their feet were healed. And it was like it, they had some sort of accident and their foot was messed up. I remember another one, his eyes were all messed up, and his eyes got straightened out. And it, it was powerful. It was like God was really moving, not in the service at all, but in afterward. And there was this guest speaker, and, and uh, you know, someone someone said was testifying huge, was testifying in one of the services, and said, uh, I got healed last night, and this other kid goes, Yeah, me too, and I got healed this. And, all of a sudden, like, like these kids were just like, hallelujah, this is awesome. And the guest speaker, and I, I don't really know what he believed. I, I do know that the end result of the guest speaker was he, uh, he ended up stepping out of ministry, and I don't think he would serve God anymore today. But his response to the youth, they were all like, glory to God, I healed of this, I healed of that. And his response was, well, don't get too distract distracted by God's hand and miss God's face. <laughs> Which, when I heard that, I was like, uh, what? <laughs> that doesn't sound like scripture. God's promises and his face, his hand and his face, are no different. You're not going to go for what God has promised you and miss God. You're not going to like, Take God in his word and say, Lord, I'm coming to you for these things, these promises are the And be like, well, you just love God for what he does. It's like, well, actually, we love God because he first loved us. And one of the ways we know he loves us is because it's not just words on a page. It's promises that I experience. And when I experience those promises, the love of God floods me. But I was um, I was talking to my son the other day. He's seven, and a couple testimonies for about my son. He was um, he. This was right after Christmas, like mid January this year. And he goes, he goes, Dad, I really want a hoverboard. And I'm like, we just had Christmas. Yeah, I, I, I got you guys in a gift. Better luck next year. <laughs> And I said, I said, well, we just did Christmas, but if you want a hoverboard, well, believe God for a hoverboard. <laughs> we're not your own, we're not your source. God's your source. You know, believe God for what you want. Believe God for the things that you, you desire. His word says he'll give you the desires of your heart. And so so he goes, okay, he kind of was like a little bit like, and that wasn't really the answer I thought. <laughs> And he ended up having the same conversation on a different different time with my wife. She gave him the exact same response, and we hadn't even talked about it. And so, so we're talking, and then a couple of days goes by, and I said, Carter, did you uh, did you ask God or did you release your faith for 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 a hoverboard yet? And he says, Well, no, not yet. I said, Well, where, when are you going to? If you want a hoverboard, like you you'll get you one. He goes, he goes, okay, well, I'll do it tonight. This is like a Saturday night. And uh, so he, he goes to bed. He tells me later, he prayed. He said, Lord, I want a hoverboard, and I'm believing you for one. That simple. He wakes up the next day. He goes to, we go to church. He gives him the offering because we talked about sowing and reaping and how you sometimes sow for what you want. And uh, and. He's talking to me after church. He's like, Dad, how's this going to happen? You know, is God just going to, like, make some hoverboard come down? <laughs> He's trying to figure this thing out. And I 
I said, well, there's many ways the Lord can get stuff to you. You know, it's, it's not necessarily going to come one way. Don't try to figure out how God's going to do it. Good advice for me. <laughs> Don't try to figure out how God's going to do it. Just put your trust in Him. He's faithful. He's the one who gave you His word. He gave you the promise. Just trust Him. Who cares how it comes? He says, okay, I will. And, he, and then later that night, we had some company over. And Carter was just, he's this way, he's got a servant's heart. He was just going and getting drinks for people, and he was just serving people, and that's just, that's how, how he is all the time. And, uh, and this one person was so just touched by his servant's heart. They just, they, they turned to him and said, Carter, do you want anything? <laughs> Without hesitation, hoverboard. <laughs> So they whip out their phone, Amazon a hoverboard, no way. and it's there in two days. <laughs> and like, so Carter, look, God provided you this because you turned to him, and he was your answer, he was your solution, and you got a hoverboard. And he was he was just like on cloud nine for like the rest the next two weeks. Especially it looked like he was on a cloud running around. <laughs> so excited, and he's like, man, that was awesome, like, God loves me, mm -hmm. and, and then this last week, he's playing at the house, doing something with a ball, he always has a ball in his hand, and he ends up jamming his finger, and he ends up hurting himself, I don't even know what happened, I'm leaving to go to LBC and get a speaker, and this, he ends up jamming his finger, I find out later, he gets this little brace for it, you know, someone in the family has all these medical things, so he has a family that his finger, and, uh, and I don't really see him the rest of the week because of LBC every night, Wednesday night service, I see him Friday, and I said, I, and, I, and I looked at him, and, I, and the Lord just led me to say this to him, I, I said, well, Carter, when I pray for your finger, it's going to be completely healed, and he stared at me, he stares back at me, and I walk off. <laughs> I'm like 30 minutes later, I walk up to him and say the same thing. Carter, when I pray for your finger, it's getting completely healed. He looks at me. I look at him. I walk away. It's happened a few times. And then it's coming that evening, and we're about to, to go to bed. We always pray before we go to bed. And I said, um, I said Carter, I'm going to... When I pray for your finger, you're getting completely healed. He goes, yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know. I said, I said, you let me know when you're ready. He goes, oh, you're waiting for me. I want you to, you know, take initiative and reach out and get what you're, what, what you're going to get from the Lord. And so he goes, you know, he, he thinks about it for another few seconds. He goes, okay, I'm ready. <laughs> takes his brace off and pulls it out to me and I grab his finger and I start and she's the same finger be healed and he goes, Dad, your hand is really hot. Why is your hand so hot? I'm like, well, sometimes that's how the power of God manifests. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, and he goes and he gets done getting prayed for and he starts making a fist. He goes, Whoa, my I can make a fist and it doesn't hurt. And all the swelling instantly went away, and he started like doing this. He's like, he's like, God really loves me. No. Wow. I have a basketball game tomorrow. <laughs> I'm so glad I have a, my fingers not jammed anymore because I have a basketball game tomorrow. Mm. And he, he, the end result of what he received, which were the promises of God, was him recognizing how much God loved. I mean, you, you need to help to misunderstand it. You need a religious person to make you think otherwise. A child will get it. A child will understand when God helps me, it's because he loves me. And it's because he knows, it's because when he does things for us and his promises get revealed in us and they manifest in our life, our confidence in his love grows. And then... 
What happens when we experience the love of God? Well, the Bible says we love him because he first loved us. And so this, this whole dance that we do with the Lord, which is him providing for us, us looking to him so that the things that we need and the things that we're looking for, those are, those are manifest in us. It starts this dance of love where we receive love from the Lord. And there's more ways than, than just receiving the promises. Sometimes you hear the voice of God tell you that he loves you. But one of the primary ways is he wants to show you tangibly that he loves you. He doesn't want it to be conceptual for you. He wants it to be tangible where you say, like, like Carter, God loves me. He healed my finger and he gave me a hoverboard. <laughs> He's going to carry that for the rest of his life. And it's going to be the, you know, the first of many things that the Lord does for him. But that should be our life. Our life should be when I need something, I know who to go to. Yeah. When I, when I have some sort of problem going on, the answer is God. The kids ministry, they get this, right? Like, every answer is Jesus, right? <laughs> to any problem you're having, the answer is Jesus. Jesus is the answer. He's the solution to everything. There's no problems that you deal with that aren't covered by promises. There's no hopeless situation. There's no, like... Well, what about this, God? I'm in this terrible situation. He's like, well, I forgot that one. <laughs> Oops, missed that promise. No, he has promised you in every area of need of your life, he has a promise to you. He is your provider. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. He is your protector. He is the one that makes a way for you. He's the one who gave up everything for you to be like him and be back, to, for you to escape an eternity away from him. Like, he is the answer. He is the one who provides a way. In every situation, in every circumstance, he's the one that will, if we will look to him, if we will say, God, you said in your word, you promised me right here that you said this pain, this issue in my body, it was born on the back of Jesus when he, when he received stripes. God, you said right here, you provide all my needs according to your riches and glory. I do the first part of the scripture, which is I put the kingdom of God first, and I, and I give, and I, since I'm a giver, Lord, you promised you supply all my needs. And you, this is the interaction that we have with the Lord. He, he desires this interaction with us. He wants to be a part of everything that you need. You know, the world wants to try to figure it out in lots of different ways. And, and some of the ways that the world figures it out <coughs> is they will, they will take an answer that God's provided, like, uh, like healing, and they'll just try to come up with the solutions themselves, right? The world, if you look, is gradually moving, I'll say society, the world, is gradually moving further and further from God to, and, and developing technology and developing di di different ways to where you can go, I don't need God anymore, which is all the result of the same spirit that the Tower of Babel, right? The Tower of Babel, we don't need God. We have our own intellect and our own united ability. And so we can go away from whatever God's provided and the doing things his way. We can figure this out on our own. And some of those ways are like um, addiction. You might not think addiction would be an answer to a solution, but many of the problems that people deal with, they answer by substituting something in their life that is they think is a solution, they think is a fix, but it ends up being just compiling the problem even further. It just makes things worse. Every solution that man comes up with ultimately makes the problem worse. 
Because because one of the results is I don't need God. I got this figured out. One of the results, the way the world works, I'm going to get a solution apart from the Lord. This is contrasting the church, right? Meaning this: as the church, we don't do what the world does because their options are to turn from a different direction, 180 degrees from the Lord, to find their solution. The church does the opposite of what the world does. We turn toward God to find our solution. There's no problem you deal with that doesn't have a solution. Everything is covered in his word. If you don't know what the solution is, it's in here. Every problem is covered. God has made a way. God has answered. You could be dealing with the worst Sickness, you could be dealing with the worst heartache, like there was talked about earlier. You could be dealing with the worst addiction. You could be dealing with um, marital problems. You could be dealing with, uh, we could just keep making lists of all the problems. Someone famously said, I got 99 problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one solution, and his name is Jesus. It doesn't matter the problem. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. God is a God who does, who he specializes in the impossible. The worse it looks, the more glory he gets out of it. I was talking to someone recently about they were uh, they were believing God for a house. And uh, and they were dealing with the crazy market that's happening, right? Trying to figure out where to where to buy and what to buy, and the market keeps going up and up and up, and, and, uh, and they're like, yeah, the interest rates have gone up, and they're, they're, they're coming to me and asking me, well, what, what should I do? Should we just try to find something real quick so that, so that the, you know, we get in the market and we're able to just get a house? Should we just, you know, that's, that's what our realtor's telling us, is just, just do something real quick to get in, even if it's a lower price today, and it'll, it'll, it'll still increase. I said, well, you need to follow what the Lord's leading you to do. Don't buy a house that you don't have peace about, which is, which is what, they're, what they're endeavoring to do and be led by the Lord and where, what to buy and where to buy. And, uh, and, I, and I said, and, you know, let the market go crazy. Let the interest rate skyrocket. Come on, God's going to get more glory out of it. The more impossible the situation looks, the more glory he's going to get out of it. Like, I picture, I just picture, like, Elijah pouring water yeah. on the on the things that are about to be burned and going to, you know, call fire down from heaven to prove God is, is the one true God and all these false gods, these demon gods that these others are serving. You know, it's like, cool, let's just pour water on this situation. <laughs> We're believing God for fire. Let's pour water on it. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's going to be God or it's not. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know how bad it is. Cool. It's either going to be God or it's not. And God's capable, I think, of handling any situation. He's been doing this for a long time. And if there was a situation he might not have been able to handle, I would put it like, like he resurrected Jesus after three days. That was probably pretty tough. <laughs> Compared to whatever situation you're going through. Yeah. Is, is it as hard as resurrecting Jesus? If it's not that hard, then I think God can handle it. And you have promise after promise in his word after word. And, and they're precious. You must get these in you. These must be a part of us. This is how we partake of him. This is how we step into the nature in which we were born. We were born into his nature. This is how we start seeing his nature manifest to us. We partake of his promises. We see what he's promised, and all of a sudden it manifests. And we say, Lord, what you said is true. And we put a smile on the face of God. Come on. This is how we do it. We say, Lord, you said, and we take it to him, and we, we don't settle for anything else other than what he said. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, you know, it's not like, 
Lord, you promised you'd provide, and therefore I'm going to go get an exorbitant loan that I don't really can't afford and say, look what the Lord provided. <laughs> like, well, that's not God. That's you figuring it out. That's just the way the world does it. It's like, oh, I need a car. Lord's going to give me a car. And I'm going to go finance it at the dealership. <laughs> I'm going to pay double what it's worth. Time. That doesn't sound like God. Let God do what he does. Don't settle for, for man's best. Don't settle for anything short of God's best. And you partake of his divine nature. Amen. You know, I had a word um, earlier today about addiction. I really do think it's somewhat tied to what Pastor Mark and Pastor Bill had regarding people doing things to you and having heartache and things and, and, and a lot of times that shame and, and those things will will you'll, you'll turn to things as solutions because maybe you didn't know you could turn to the Lord in that area. Maybe you didn't know him at the time. Um, but it does produce real issues. So I had this word about addiction earlier today and uh, I want to I wanna pray for those who are dealing with that. The good news is I'm not going to call you out. I need to stay right where you are. You don't have to raise your hand. But I do want you to do this. I do want you to recognize that God is the answer to that problem. He's the one that's going to, he, he literally will just wipe it away. You know, I once was, um, I, I knew someone who had, a, who had a son, and he was like six at the time. And they were struggling with uh, cigarettes. They, they, they had come to the Lord probably six months prior to this, and they were still smoking, and they're like, I don't know if I can beat this. I've tried to quit multiple times, and it's like every time I try, it just gets worse. And uh, they're on, she's on her way taking her son to school, like kindergarten, and she's, you know, she gets out her cigarettes as he's about to leave the car to go to school. And he goes, the son, the son goes, Mom, what are those? Why, why, why do you need those? She goes, well, I'm, I'm, I'm really wanting to be free of these. I don't want to need them. And he goes, well, I'll pray for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll pray for you, and you'll, you, you'll, you won't have to have them anymore. She, she goes, oh, okay. Sounds good. And he runs off the to the playground area before school or whatever. Um, she, she says later that she saw him, like, just take a second and pause. And she goes to light up her cigarette in her car and takes a, takes a drag out of it. And right as she takes a drag out of the cigarette, it, like, all of a sudden is disgusting to her. She looks at it and throws it out the window. She throws her, her in front of the school. <laughs> cigarettes away, and to this day, as far as I know, this is years ago, she has never smoked again. And instantly, the, the desire completely gone. Physical addiction, we all know cigarettes are very physically addicting. Completely gone. No withdrawals, no symptoms, nothing. Come on, the Lord is so good. He has promises, and his solutions are just like you don't have to go through years of therapy. You don't have to slowly get yourself on nicotine patches or something. Like God's solution is he just wants to fix it. And he's, he's so capable. Not only is he so capable, but he's so willing. He loves you so much. He cares about you specifically so much that he's promised you deliverance. He's promised you that any chain that would ensnare you, he broke 2,000 years ago. Promise you freedom. And so, if you're dealing with addiction, I want to I want to um, pray for that. Uh, I want to do this. Um, let's all stand up. And I don't know if we can either get keys or a work. Maybe we can do a song. I don't know. I'll let you decide. Do whatever you want. And I want to I want to pray for specifically addiction. And I'm, and addictions can manifest in different ways. And, and I'm talking down to like 
addicted to your phone. It's a real thing, are they? <laughs> Everyone, like, yes, yeah, this service was for me. <laughs> I'm not praying for any of you, just like with my hands, so we won't have a all night line line going through. <laughs> Whatever the, whatever the issue is, whatever the addiction is, you know, the reason addiction comes is usually because there's some sort of dissatisfaction in your life. The Lord is the answer in that situation, too. He satisfies. The Lord is so good. If, you're, if you find yourself being drawn to something, screens, or, you know, I had a word about video game addiction earlier. You're addicted to something like that where you just, man, it's like I just can't help myself. I think about it all day. It's like, well, that's that's bondage. That's not okay. And and you know, you can get you could trade that for a better addiction. I know addictions has the connotation of unhealthy, but you could trade that for a dependence on the Lord. Amen. You could trade that for a healthy dependence. Yeah. Where you're like, wake up in the morning, man. God, I just want the Lord. I just want to talk to Him. I just want to. I just want His presence in my life. I want to. I want to read more about what He's promised me. I want to get His Word in my life so I see the divine nature come out in my life. You know, we're all supposed to have that dependence, but we just say, you know, I, I just can't wait to talk to Him. I can't wait to be with Him. I can't wait to. And, and it doesn't have to be set aside hours and hours. It can be like I'm going throughout my day enjoying the Lord. But the same way your mind goes to the addiction, your mind can your mind can be it can be replaced with it goes to the Lord instead. It goes to his word, meditating on his word. It's going to you know your mind can you can choose to set your mind on things above. And so when by the way, the Bible says taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, that, that initial taste is designed for you to keep coming back for more. It's like, wow, that was really good. I want more of him. Like, I need that. Like, some, some people in here are addicted to different things, maybe now or maybe in your past, regarding different substances. But you, you tried it, like, oh, that was good. The Lord is so much better, and those are all counterfeits of him. Amen. Those are all, again, a world's answer to take you away from the one really satisfying. Amen. Come on. Amen. You ever been high on the most high? <laughs> you can really Woo! get so ecstatic in the presence of God where it's like, I don't understand why anybody takes a counterfeit to this. Some of us have taken those counterfeits and no, they don't compare. They don't compare. Amen. Amen. Well, if it's you, I want you just to receive your freedom right now. Father, I thank you for the power of addiction broken by the mightier power of a God who loves. And in Jesus' name, I declare addiction. Break off and leave these now. I command these spirits that are behind this to be gone in Jesus' name. You bow your knee and leave. I thank you, Father God, for things being restored and Father God, a hunger for you taking the place of addiction. A hunger for your word. A hunger for just your goodness in their life. Your mercy. Your grace in them. I thank you, Father God. Addiction has no more place in their life. From this day forward, they walk as free children of God. No longer ensnared. No longer with a ball and chain dragging them down. But Father, freedom Freedom to see what they've been born to see. Freedom to do what you called them to do. No longer ensnared. Father God, walking and running and jumping and dancing with freedom and joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You're faithful. You are the answer. You are the solution. We look to you. We thank you, Father God, right now that you're, that you're giving us you're giving us the answer. Solution we find it in your presence. We find it in your promises. 
Thank you, Father God. Oh